Ministers, your excellences, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here today and a privilege to address you. What I'm going to say now is from the perspective of a pension fund. From my perspective, we are witnessing major transformations these years. We have been going through a crisis of historical dimensions. The banks were initially at the center of the crisis, but as the asset bubble deflated, pension funds and other institutional investors all over the world took huge uh, hits on their investments. At the same time, public sector deficits soared. After a long period of very high real returns and contribution holidays, the funding ratios are now low, and so are the prospective real investment returns. In other words, pension funds in most countries are in crisis. They face huge dilemmas that call for critical review of past practices. Basically, pension funds need to generate higher investment returns, but the ability to assume financial risks is lower than it used to be. In my view, we need a new pension paradigm. Let me begin with a few remarks on the pension system itself. The pension system's most fundamental role is to handle longevity and investment risk for the individual in a collective framework. An individual trying to secure her old age is confronted with two fundamental risks. First, she does not know when she will die. Second, investments are risky and this may impact her income uh, in her old age. Pension systems can diversify these risks within uh, generations and between generations, making life more secure and predictable in the older years. People live longer than they used to, not only in advanced economies, but all over the world. That is indeed a triumph, but aging is putting pension systems under pressure. The reason is that it's very difficult for society to transfer resources over time into the future. The individual is able to save for the future, but society can only do the same by investing in real capital or by running a balance of payment surplus. You can say that at any point in time, every generation has to support its parents and children. Sometimes this intergenerational uh, contract implies quite literally that the old generation is being supported economically by their children. In most developed countries, the support of the older generation is a little bit more sophisticated. It is the pension systems is based on two sources. The first source is, is contribution to a pension fund system. That is what you would call the funded approach. The second source is the government budget, which is uh, funded by taxes. The funny thing is that in macroeconomic context, a pension fund contribution and a tax are more or less identical, at least formally. They are both means to secure funds for consumption somewhere else in the economy. However, we are, uh, as we all know, taxes are, or could at least be, distortionary. And these distortions can be intolerable if the burden on the tax system becomes too large. To it, we are currently seeing a negative effect of stressed public finances in most countries within the EU and also elsewhere. In light of this, I think that it is in the real wo world a hybrid model, partly funded, partly tax financed, is to be preferred, and it will also provide diversification of the pension system. And by the way, most people prefer pension contributions to taxes for reasons I don't understand. But even irrespective of how the pension systems are organized, they will face similar longevity-based intergenerational problems. If the parent generations start dying slower, it will require that someone, the young, the old, those in the middle, tighten their belts in order to make ends meet. Individual mortality risk can, buy, can be diversified, but pension fund cannot hedge longevity risk at the or at the macro level. It is as simple as that. And this brings me to the second intergenerational issue, the distribution of investment risk. If, pe if pension depends only on investment returns realized during people's working lives, you will most likely see some lucky generations and some very unlucky generations. There will be uh, intergenerational in inequity. The reason is that the financial markets go through very long cycles, as we've seen the last 
was 10 years. Some of my colleagues have made some interesting historical simulations that show how important it is to start and end your pension savings at the right moment or time. Or you could also say, to put it in another way, you should uh, have in mind when you are, uh, give birth to yourself. Uh, the pension system can handle this problem. And in all modesty, I think my own fund does it quite well. But I think it, the issue is somewhat overlooked. Let me turn, to the, turn from the intergenerational to the intragenerational issues. As I alluded to earlier, one of the central features of a pension system is how it, is, it distributes the risk among the various stakeholders, the individual, the corporations, and government. Individuals, individuals are not good at handling certain risks related to longevity and investments. The individual knows that she will die, but not when. In order to handle this uncertainty uh, by herself, she needs to accumulate personal savings. These savings may turn out to be too small, meaning that she could li be living penniless toward the end. Or they could be too high, meaning that she is leaving an excessive inheritance. Maybe her children may might disagree. Pension funds can diversify these risks for, uh, for the individual. Nevertheless, the recent years there has been a move from defined benefit schemes to pure defined contribution schemes, that is, individual accounts. This entails a massive transfer of risk from pension providers to the individual. The reasons for this move are easy to understand in light of the population aging, new regulatory uh, requirements, and the financial crisis. But what do we need a pension system for in that case? Savings are perfectly well handled by banks. What can we do to improve things? A year or so ago, we implemented in ATP a new pension product that retains security and stability for the individual without resorting to a model with low exp uh, expected investment returns and thus low pensions. It's a, a hybrid pension product design uh, that manages the risk profile for different age groups in a collective framework, including the risk posed by in the face of the financial crisis. It's a guaranteed minimum pension, uh, nominal pension, and includes lifelong pension guarantees uh, with a conditional indexation as well as insurance elements. It provides a lifelong annuitized benefit guaranteeing against longevity risk. And it has, uh, on top of that, some in uh, insurance features. What is important is that it retains guaranteed minimum nominal pensions based on market interest rates. The new pension model splits the pension contribution into guaranteed parts, which uh, ensures a minimum pension, and the bonus part, which provides an option for indexation. Importantly, the security and predictability does not come at the expense of low pensions, and that is certainly important. For two reasons. First, pensions accrue at long market interest rates, and all pension guarantees are fully hedged by long-dated government bonds. That is why we are demanding government bonds and interest rate uh, swaps. It means that the ex expected returns uh, are higher than money market rates, and this return premium is captured by the liability hedging, thus improving expected pension, pensions essentially risk-free. Uh, 